book, focus your mind, and jot down lessons, advices, as these women share their stories with us in the next few minutes. So I'm going to ask you all what you've learned so far at the end of the story. So don't slack, like state the end of the event. Basically, all our guest speakers work as rhythmic technologies. So first, um, so I'll be calling their name. First is Christina Nguyen. She works as a business development lead. Second is Grace. She works as a Linux system administrator and Jody Ann Spence. She works as a junior IT engineer. So I want you all to welcome these amazing ladies with a standing ovation, like drop the clap emojis in the comment section below. Thank you, thank you. Okay, the floor is yours. Okay, great, ladies, thank you so much, please. Victoria. Thank you so much, everyone. And thank you, Victoria, for the wonderful introduction. I do have it recorded now. Um, You're welcome. Femi. Uh, we'll be able to arrange that later on. Um, we're just going to give it a few more minutes. I know we have quite a few folks uh, popping in today. So we'll start right at 12.05, if that's OK with everyone. All right, I'll take the silence as a, a, a nod to yes to that. So. Uh, we have 136 people registered. We got quite a few folks popping in now. So we'll just give it a few more moments and we'll start right off the bat here. Um, just to reiterate, we'll kind of go through a couple housekeep, uh, housekeeping tips and just to better moderate the questions later on today um, at the beginning of our presentation. And then we'll roll right into it. And much to Victoria said, please take notes. Um, if you would like to share any of your own advice, feel free to do so in the comment section. We will be looking at that um, and trying to stay as active as possible there as well. And again, we all we very much appreciate this opportunity and your time taken today. I know everybody's getting off of work. It's Friday. Um, I know when we and at FM, you were trying to pick a date. Uh, it was either the weekend or Fridays. And I was like, oh, let's do Fridays. Get everybody's uh, to start their weekend nice and fresh. Um, and, and Victoria would like to, uh, would like to reiterate, uh, Victoria, please introduce yourself, your name and your location and your expectations uh, in there. We would love to connect with you afterwards and if, feel free to put your LinkedIn information if you have that uh, for others and um, others to connect with each other and as well as us to connect with you. And we appreciate your patience here as we uh, use our waiting room and get everybody in. All right, so I'm going to begin sharing the screen and we'll uh, begin our uh, presentation. And so I'll leave uh, the participants letting um, folks in from the waiting room to Victoria and Adafemi. And if you have any questions, um, you too just go ahead and private message me in the chat and I'll be happy to help uh, facilitate any tech issues if you run into any. All right. Okay, let's get this nice and set up. Okay. Um, are you all able to see the presentation? Yes. Thank you so much for that. Yes, we can. Beautiful, beautiful. Let me just set up my, my screen here. Nice and organized, sweet. Okay, all right, so it is 12.05. We'll go ahead and get started here. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for letting us uh, have this opportunity to present with you all today. And thank you again for spending your time with us. Again, it's Friday and we're trying to keep this to an hour and hopefully we'll have uh, plenty of time for questions and answers uh, later on at the end of our presentation. I do want to start here uh, with when I met at FME and how this opportunity came to be. I was stalking the Slack channels of All Day DevOps and offering sticker packs and at FME reached out and was like, hey, I would like a sticker pack and I was wondering if you would like to tell your story to my developer student club. And I'll be honest, folks, I was really nervous to talk about myself for 45 minutes. So. Well, here we are with three wonderful ladies with Grace and Jody Ann to help me and help this wonderful presentation and give you the best that we got um, with lessons learned. 
And to that, let's get started. All right. So what are we going to do today is we're going to run through our stories, uh, who we are, how we got into tech, and where we are today. Towards the end, we're going to go over some key takeaways and lessons learned in our journey. And some things to keep in mind as you're using Zoom here today is please use the reactions below. It could be on a little menu pop up if you're looking, um, if you're looking at us through your phone. And we love to see reactions, hand claps, you know, horns and all those good things if you <laughs> like what we're saying. And if you have any questions, please put that in the comment section and we'll be able to facilitate the questions at the end of our presentation. Um, also to note, if for some reason some crazy person comes in and wants to Zoom bomb us, I'm going to be muting everybody and likely the nefarious character will unmute and they will be banned. So be patient. I hope that's not going to happen. Uh, but just in case, I wanted to share that as well. So to start, I'm going to go ahead and pass over the mic to Ms. Grace for George. Thank you, Christina. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me here today. My name is Oyungdirish Purvdorch. Um, my nickname is Grace. I am from Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. I am system admin at Rhythmic Technologies. I want to share my career journey and my background and some lessons I picked up along the way. Here's my LinkedIn account. Feel free to reach out to me who I am. When I was in middle school, when I was 15, my sister-in-law took me to computer boot camp where I can learn MSTOS operating system. I learned the commands and I really loved it. Looking back at my first computer, it was so beautiful and it was so magic. It was very expensive at the time and my parents couldn't afford it. It was my dream to have one. Then I went to college and I choose my major in computer science and I earned my bachelor degree in 2004 in Mongolia. Then after that, I worked three years in tech field in Mobicom Corporation. I had chance to work with great software developers and engineers. They were all men. At the time I felt like I didn't fit in. I I thought like I wasn't smart enough to be become software developer or engineer. So I made the decision to come to United States to pursue accounting degree and to learn English. I prepared my TOEFL exam and applied for schools. Finally, I was accepted to the university and I arrived in United States. When I was a an international student, I had so many challenges to overcome. Real life was a little different than friends show. <laughs> challenges were language difference and culture difference. And I really struggled being homesick. I missed my family and friends and food, especially on Mongolian holidays. I cried so many days like any other international student does. I earned my master's degree in 2009, and I worked in accounting and finance field for years. I started as a bank teller, then I moved up to bookkeeper and accounts receivable, and finally became accountant. During this journey, I learned so much. I enjoyed the ride, but something was missing. How did I get back into tech? One day I was committing to work and I asked myself, do I really want to continue down this path? I realized that it's not fulfilling as it was before. So I decided to change my career back to um, tech industry. I had fundamental knowledge, but it was too old. However, it was like easier to pick up the tech knowledge. So I studied. It was not easy to come back but I am still working hard to learn and catch up the gaps. I think it's never too late to, I think it's never too late to learn. I am so proud that I made bold decision to change my career. I faced my self doubt and fear. I'm so happy working as a system admin. I love what I do. 
learning new skills every day, it makes me, I accomplish something and fulfill. Here's my couple advice to you. <clears throat> my first advice to women is don't repeat my mistake. I was so scared and I didn't believe in myself. There is so much to accomplish and so much to learn, but you can do it. You are not, you are enough and you are smart. <clears throat> My second advice to women is ladies, we can offer our natural skills to tech industry. For example, we are naturally caring and we are very good at communication. We can bring our intensity and focus to work. As a mom, I choose to work so I, I can, so I bring level of intensity and focus to my work because I want to make sure that the time spent away from the kids and family needs to be productive and also needs to be creative. It has to bring something value to the table. Also, in my opinion, women can, <clears throat> women's ability to communicate Communication is better than men. <laughs> we communicate well. I think it's gem skills to the tech industry. And my third um, advice to you is follow your passion, follow your own heart. There are so many opportunities in the tech in the industry, so you can cho choose any of them. And I would also say be resilient. Life has ups and downs. If you made wrong choice, it's okay. Never look back and regret. Move on, learning and evolving is process where we find our strength. My last advice to you is continuously and consistent learning is key to success. Take world changes any change so fast anyways. <clears throat> as long as you got that attitude and hunger to learn. If you like to solve problems, you will do great. Have a courage. This is wonderful industry to work in. Now I'm going to pass Mick to over to Jody Ann. Thank you, Grace. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Jody, and I'm an IT specialist. You can find me on LinkedIn and on GitHub. So uh, who am I? Well, I'm from Montego Bay, Jamaica. In addition to being in tech, I'm also a healthcare specialist and a soldier in the United States Army. I started from a humble beginning. My life changed when I got my first computer. It was a Windows 95 desktop, days of CRTs, defragging, BSODs, and floppy disk it. I was curious, trying to figure out how a computer works. Fast forward to when I was 19, where I had built my first computer and how I felt a sense of accomplishment. When I moved to the US, I started with a background in healthcare. My primary focus was how to better a community. I worked as a healthcare specialist for four years until I decided to change career path. I still have a long way to go, but I'm already so far from where I used to be and I'm proud of that. And then this leads me into how I got into tech. So my first job started in tech back in 2016 where I was a help desk support specialist. I went to a tech straight school to sharpen my technical skills. I also started reading books, built my own home lab, virtualization, Hyper-V, subscribe to technical magazines and also YouTube channels. I embraced a variety of software, learning new applications quickly, spun up my own EC2 instance in addition to building a website. Working in the tech industry, I have been afforded the opportunity to have a diversity in tech. I have experience in hardware and software, networking and information security. So where I am today, working in the tech industry, I am able to have diverse experience. I'm currently pursuing my degree in cybersecurity and I've earned, I've earned many certifications. I'm driven by presenting as a black woman in tech 
and enjoy the major high from success. Now I'm gonna pass the mic over to Christina. Hi everyone. Thank you so much, Jody, for that. My name is Christina Nguyen. I'm your business development lead here with Rhythmic Technologies. And here are a couple of my socials. I live on LinkedIn, so please do share your LinkedIn information in the comments. I would love to connect with you and continue the conversations or help facilitate any questions after the fact. Um, you can also check out our website there. And I'm doing this Twitch journey and streaming gaming. So I just wanted to throw that in there as well. All right, so who am I? I was a restaurant girl through and through. I started and lived in the restaurants, never thought I could leave it. And I started as a hostess and worked my way up into bookkeeping and ultimately left the company as a corporate bookkeeper. So to that, I love food, money, and spreadsheets as much as the most next person does. In my free time, I'm also pursuing streaming games on Twitch, as I mentioned, and uh, for the spookier folks out there, I love Halloween, so I do a lot of adult face painting around that season. As my dad would say, I do have a hustler state of mind with lots of little side hustles out there. Um, when I went to ITT Tech, I specifically did project management as my studies and to ultimately avoid the cybersecurity route that many in my school pursued. I was not into tech. I did not think I had a place for it. I also thought coding was the only way to be a techie and that just wasn't who I was. Fast forward to that, I never thought I could do anything in that, right? So a little history on how I got into tech. My boss and his wife were regulars at my restaurant and I knew them growing up as a kid. And I say kid, I was 16 years old. So, And between all of that, um, having had met them and spent time with them over the years, um, there was a falling out, so to speak, where I left that particular location. And let's just say there was a hair cutting scenario in there that I just won't forget in between it all, um, where I cut one of their son's hair and I did a really bad job, but you know, it's okay. <laughs> Fast forward to 2018, they called and offered me a job with them as a junior project manager. Looking back then, I thought I still had no place in tech. I went into that interview trying to convince myself or having tried to get them to convince me what would be a good position for me to start with them. And what really took it home and made me take the leap and leaving the company that I very much loved with my restaurants is this quote that my boss said, is there anyone above you that you wanna be? And hence I realized there wasn't. And I thought that was a really great time to take the leap and take the risk and chance. And I'm really happy that they also took the risk in hiring me. And to that, here and where I am today, I love my job, it's really cool. Um, I was originally hired as a junior project manager, but it actually didn't work out the way we hoped. I went to every meeting, I networked everywhere to learn more about tech, and now I am the business development lead for the company, and I love how I got here today. I, that right there is a picture of my first speaking engagement. And you guys can't tell, but I wore white contacts in there because I was so gosh darn nervous to see a room full of people listen to me talk. This particular presentation was more about telling people about how restaurants work and how awesome and diverse the DevOps similarities are in a restaurant. So that's why it's DevOps on the menu. And you can actually find that presentation on YouTube um, and I'd be happy to share that with you all as well. So to that, there are a lot of positions that do not include code. It took me a little while to learn that. And there are so many opportunities in tech and you will find yours. You don't have to be a techie to be a part of the technology industry. And to that, I'm gonna go ahead and pass back the mic to Jody as we start talking about our takeaways and journeys. Thank you, Christina. So what's trending? Um, to stay up to date in tech, these are some of the things that are trending and it's important to stay relevant. So we have artificial intelligence as a service, 5G, robotics, automation and drones, extended reality. So COVID-19 has made customer behaviors across all demographics more digitally focused. Trend number one, artificial intelligence as a service. More organizations use AI as a service. And this basically means that companies will go to cloud providers like Google, 
AWS or Microsoft and simply say that they would like to apply AI to their processes and have data used to train um, machine learning algorithms. And cloud providers can supply the algorithms to the infrastructure and supply and pay as a service. Now, trend number two, um, we have fifth generation, which is um, mobile mobile network. It gives high speed internet into our homes and into our businesses and reduce latency. And we go to trend number three, robotics. Now, um, robotics automation and drones, companies now must automate and streamline their business operations. Drones can help with this as because companies want to take people out of unnecessary steps out of their business processes. So for example, Amazon is trying to automate their warehouses and bring in robots to do the work and even use drones to deliver parcels. Now um, we go to trend number four, which is extended reality. This umbrella concept, including both virtual reality and augmented reality, may advance beyond the niche applications as the technology continues to improve and user behavior adapts. So exa for example, gaming, camera tracking in real time, it can create a virtual environment. Another is healthcare which allows surgeons to virtualize and visualize complexities of organs in 3D. Now I will pass the mic over back to Christina. Awesome, thank you so much, Jody, for the, to let us know what's trending in the tech industry. I also want to highlight ways to serve the community. Networking can be attending events like these, supporting other groups that geared towards your interests. And I'm telling you, Meetup has so many. If you want to learn about Python, there's probably 20,000 groups out there talking about Python. Um, how and where to network would be also Women Who Code is a great, uh, great organization as well. Women in Tech is also a great organization. And if you ever need to pick my brain for what cool networking groups to check out, please look at my LinkedIn. I share every 10 days, the next 10 days of uh, networking events. Um, be open to conversation while you're networking. It's okay if you're an introvert, and I know there's introverts out there who have their camera off and don't want to engage. That's totally okay. Um, did you know that introverts make better conversationalists and they guard their time better? So for the introverts out there, networking is a really cool way to leverage a community that you like and can connect with and build that community. Check out also the many Slack channels as how I met at FME. And there's also a great way to get involved there and serve your community too. Finding a mentor can also help you stay accountable to your goals and someone in the industry could help share many insights to that. Typically you can find these mentors in these networking groups. And so that you can also volunteer. Volunteering can be helping nonprofits in your area that support the tech industry, and it can also help becoming a mentor yourself. And I can say it to that regard, you can be a mentor to anybody, even though you might feel you're struggling in your own journey. Somebody out there is probably wanting to hear your story as well, as you all are hearing our stories, and we thank you again for your time. And so that co-organizing is also another way. If you want to get more deeper in the networking and you like that group, help organize. I, in fact, organized five of them. So to that, I've learned a lot and it's a great way to expand your network with like-minded folks. I'm gonna pass back over the mic to Jody for the next set. Thank you, Christina. All right, so we go to um, certifications. Now, a few um, DevOps certifications include the Kubernetes, uh, Docker certificate, AWS Solutions Architect and the AWS DevOps Associate. Now certifications have been the stepping stones for you to find a job or you can grow in your current job role. One of the benefits of getting certified is that it shows commitment to profession and you get personal satisfaction and development as well. Some other certifications include the ITIL which is a set of best practices for management with their organization needs. We have the networking certification, 
which is processing of data with nodes over shared network. We also have um, cloud computing, which is process of delivering computing services with several different um, services over the network. And last but not least, we have cybersecurity, defending systems and protecting systems from malicious attacks. There are many other certifications available depending on the role and the path that you want to take in technology. And I will pass this over back to Christina. Awesome, thank you, Jody. So how are we doing so far? Just gonna do a halfway check-in with folks. You can uh, pop into the chat, thumbs up if you like, just making sure we uh, are at a good pace and you guys are soaking in all this great information. <laughs> all right, all right. So the next part, as you all are majority college students coming out of the um, university, I wanted to share some job seeking tips uh, that I've collected along the way. Um, so networking, as I mentioned before, is a, a great way to build that community and get insights for it. But I wanna just make sure you all know, do what you can within your bandwidth. I have made the mistake and shotgun a bunch of networking events and got very burnt out. So even for the introverts and extroverts out there, it can burn you out. So just take your time, find out those groups that you like and find who the community would best serve you. Another great thing to take in mind for is take all the interviews you can, whether they're positions above you or below you, um, practice makes perfect. A lot of resumes do have a lot of great things, but really they get to know you in that interview. Another way to go into that interview posture is be you, don't try to pretend because you're about to spend many, many hours at this job and they're not hiring that person they met on that resume interview meeting. They're meeting that person that starts with them the next day. So also keep in mind, they should need to convince you why they're a good fit for your life. Often not a lot of job seekers go into interviews trying to convince them, convince the company to hire them, but they don't take into account how that company can fit for them. So just make sure you do your research on the company and make sure that you also cater your resume to that job. I myself had a lot of restaurant skill set, so I'm not going to say in my resume that I could take your order really fast, but there is a lot of soft skills in my resume that help facilitate the position that I have today. Um, cover letters and thank you notes. It's an old art. It can't hurt. The more information you can provide the hiring manager or the person that's hiring, um, is much more suited if you can give them a nice little package of cover, cover letters and thank you notes. Um, again, it couldn't hurt to have it. Um, so I always like to push on that as a good practice. So next one, update that LinkedIn. Please do, it's so easy. It's the place as you all know for professional development. Um, I can tell you when I first started, the last time I looked at my LinkedIn was in high school. And in 2018, when I got the job, I had to beef it up and make it much more nicer now. Um, I'm always happy to help you in that journey. If you ever want to poke me on LinkedIn, I would love to help you um, make your LinkedIn look a little bit better if I can. Otherwise, that's it. Do it. This is the way they can know who you are and how they can help people can make referrals to you. And make sure you can leverage your network on LinkedIn. Another fact would be check your local resources. From nonprofits to career centers, there are plenty of job boards, career fairs, and internship opportunities in Nigeria that you can see and check out in your local community. Another um, activity you can do, if any of these tips have been helpful, is this one. If you don't know what you want to do and you don't know the company you want to represent, design your dream job description. This is an activity I like to share with a lot of job seekers, is to design that dream job description so that now you have a baseline to compare all these companies to that you are gonna get these interviews for. So highly recommended, and you'll also see what's important to you. Is it that unlimited PTL? Is it the 401k? Is it the four hours working 12 days? Or is it the five, you know, nine to five life? So that's a really great way to get a baseline of what kind of work you're willing to commit to and what you're wanting to do. And now to that, I pass over the mic to Grace. Thank you, Christina. Um, I am working tech mom of three boys. My boys are 20, 10, and five. I would like to share my great challenges and tips. 
I face many challenges like any other working parent does, especially during the pandemic. Being a mom, cooking, cleaning, driving kids to, to their games, being teacher, balancing family and career life is not easy, but it's fulfilling. It's jo joyful journey. Tip number one, planning. Planning is very important skills for a working parent, I think. For me, I usually write it down, I especially, especially my long-term girl goals or my dreams. It helps me to visualize the outcome. So I think when um, my plan doesn't work out, I use, used to give up on my planning and dreaming. Now I stop, please don't do that. <laughs> Just adjust the boundaries and priorities and replan and try it again. Um, tip number two, self-improvement. It's very important. There are so much resources out there, podcasts, audiobooks, YouTube videos, and so much more. I follow, I personally follow Jay Shetty, Marisa Peer, Tony Robbins, Mind Valley, and so much more. Most of the time, I don't have time to sit down and read book. So I listen podcasts and audiobooks while I'm cleaning or cooking and driving. I think it helps me to um, open my mind. Lastly, refreshing and mind, your mind and body's priority. If you want to be productive and successful, you have to be physically and men mentally fit. You can pour from the empty cup. So you have to take care of yourself. <laughs> so <clears throat> currently I am falling in love with my meditation practice. It helps me to clear my mind and gives me clarity. If you never tried it before, it's okay. There is so many different meditation out there. Just try them out. You may like it. Block time for a workout. I, it will help you to release the stress if you don't like to work out, you can try other things like yoga or running or jogging, walking work too. <laughs> Since we're talking about mental health, let's talk about imposter syndrome. What's imposter syndrome? I'm going to pass it over to Christina. You're muted, Christina. You're muted. <laughs> well, of course, we needed one of those in the presentation. <laughs> Thank you, Grace, for what those wonderful tips. I'm sure there's some parents out there jotting down those tips. Um, for a raise of hands here, who ever feels like an imposter? It's okay. All right, us too. Don't you worry. We're right there with you. So to that, I just want to share some tips that you can work with and help you activate and or dismiss some of that um, feeling away. So to that, what you can do right now is positive talk truly goes a long way. Um, positive talk really helps the mindset. There's things about, um, I'm sure there's scientific facts out there, but positive talk can go a long way. If you start your day not feeling too hot, go ahead. Here's a great thing to do. I do this most times too. When you brush your teeth in that mirror, give yourself a kiss, spank that butt and tell yourself you a good, bad ass because you deserve to be here and working hard for what you've been doing. Um, second tip would be own your accomplishments. A great way to practice that is you can do this right now. Write down three things that you are grateful for or three things that you've accomplished this past week, this past year, in 2020, um, lots of time was given back to us in 2020, so I'm sure there was a couple of accomplishments. It could have been making a garden, reading a book, whatever it is, losing five pounds. So own your accomplishments and be proud and write them down. You worked hard to be here and you earned your place. Don't compare yourself to others. You are your own person with your own agenda and journey. And to that, I want to share that there are a lot of resources out there to help mitigate the imposter syndrome feeling. Both men and women do feel this. It's not just a gender specific uh, syndrome. Uh, so take your time, be grateful for what you've done and talk to others and surround yourself with others that do positive talk. I'm sure you guys have some 
negative aspects in your life out there or friends, it's okay. It's okay to not be okay, but just know that's not who defines you. You are a 10 in your identity and that's all that matters. And to Grace, do you have any thoughts on that? Yes, of course. Um, I have felt imposter syndrome in all my life. Imposter syndrome is real. I would say don't r run away from the feelings. It, even it's uncomfortable. In my opinion, this is like a signal you are doing something new. You are doing something outside of your comfort zone. So this is a good thing. That means you are growing and developing your skill. If you like, if you feel imposture, change your perspective of this uncomfortable feeling. See it as you are growing and building yourself. Let me ask Jody Ann, have you ever experienced imposter syndrome before? Absolutely, Grace, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so um, it's just fear, overcoming fear. Distinguish the difference between humility and fear. That's one way you can overcome that. You can overcome this by remembering your training, say yes to new opportunities, and identifying your priorities. It takes hard work to make things happen, and you just need to put the time and effort in. Which brings me to what we would tell our younger selves. Now, I want to share a story about my daughter. So I had my daughter enrolled in robotics class when she was in the eighth grade, and she was the only female in that class. She came out as one of the top students in that class. She has now continued her journey in the IT field and is studying computer systems in her first year in high school. I had recognized that she was into computers from an early age, just like myself, because back in Jamaica, she got all A's in her computer class. So I helped her to build on that. And I told her, you're going to thank me one day. So I would tell my younger self that you don't have to prove yourself. Looking back, I can see why I was experiencing um, that imposter syndrome. I was worried others would think that I was a fraud at my job because deep down I felt like I was. Early in my career, I always went for roles where I'd be working with more experienced colleagues. And so I felt extra pressure to demonstrate that I belong there. All I needed to do was to just do my best and that totally shift my mindset. Um, so just know that. Um, at this age where you are right now, it's okay to fail too, and you can overcome. So um, for this, I will pass the mic over to Grace. Um, so I really want to tell my younger self that keep learning, don't give up. Don't give up like me. <laughs> Looking back, I gave up, I wasn't brave. There are endless opportunities out there, especially in tech industry. Find those limiting beliefs in, beliefs in your head and look at it and see it from different angle. It will change. So be brave. How about Christina? Yes, thank you, Grace, Jody. I love these stories and we were planning them. So um, being a first generation American here, uh, my parents obviously had a different visions for me, whether to be a doctor or own a nail shop, uh, one of those two. And obviously, I did not listen to any of that. Um, however, I thought I was just stuck to restaurants. So I wanted to share this quote here. You are not stuck to the industry you know best. I have a best friend struggling with that right now, where she feels like she can't get out of the restaurant industry. You can. Going back to what Grace said, there's also consistent and continuing learning. And of course, to that, I really wanted to share that when I came into this industry with tech, I very much felt like I couldn't be here or I didn't belong. And I just wanted to share for those who might have that, um, that thought in their head is whether it is in tech or a different form of technology, you are not stuck to what you know best. There's always room for growth and improvements and more things to learn. And you could really expand your skill sets with the growth mindset. All right. 
And I just wanted to showcase uh, rhythmic technologies and who we are. There's a, a quote here that I very much like. So my boss and uh, his wife might not like to hear it, but I like this quote. Um, it's something that we did in our branding workshop. And so computers, you want them, we got them. More importantly, we can talk to them and say things that you can't. Maybe you can write poetry or a kick-ass story, but you can't read it to your computer and make your computer dance. We can. So that's just a fun thing I like to say. Uh, we have been around about 13 years and we are at Amazon Web Services Sherpa or your guide, your, your, your ninja, your connoisseur, guiding you through your digital transformation with AWS. We have been designed and made by engineers and for engineers, and we work right alongside your teams during the doing the dirty work right with them. Your team is probably great, but wouldn't it be nice to have a second set of resources, a second set of eyes, and help them focus on what matters, a team committed to your success. It's a really great culture here. I never thought I could be in such a great company that the things I used to worry about in the restaurants, I don't worry about anymore. Um, you know, it's just, you know, what kind of beer do we have in our fridge? Because a lot of it is really just the collaboration with all of our teams and being able to work alongside these wonderful ladies and the many others in our company um, has really made it something worth talking about. So if you have any curiosities or questions about rhythmic technologies, feel free to connect with us. Um, I just wanna thank everyone and we really appreciate this opportunity to present with you and share our stories. Um, again, for more information, um, I think Victoria has shared all of our social LinkedIn pages for myself, Jody Ann and Grace um, in the chat. So do reach out. But if you wanna know more about what Rhythmic Tech is up to, please sign up for our newsletter. We have some really awesome blogs and things. And if you're also interested um, in messing around with some GitHub stuff, definitely check it out there. We have, I think, 100 and over 100 repos to mess with. So to that, I wanna thank you for this opportunity and we'll move on to our questions. Please put them in chat so we can help facilitate that. And I will stop sharing the screen, but take a little snapshot of this page. All right. So I see some questions in here. Okay, folks. Um, I know folks are kind of trickling in and uh, for those who are trickling in, don't you worry. We, we have this recorded. Um, Adifemi and Victoria made sure of it so that we can share this um, after the fact and you can pick our brains later. Um, so I have uh, the first question here. Thank you, Adifemi, for facilitating that. I have a couple of questions as well. Um, first one uh, goes to me. <laughs> what does a business developer do? Um, it's considered almost a sales position, but it's almost a long-term relationship builder. Uh, what I like to define it as is I'm a brand ambassador for the company and connecting my company to be aware with other companies and building a relationship there. It isn't the, the cold calling and trying to do quick fix sales, but it is a long-term relationship building um, position, which really attunes to my soft skills that I've gotten in the restaurant industry. So I hope uh, that answers your question there. And if you wanna know more about that specifically, please reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, here is the next question that I will leave probably to Jody Ann on this one. Um, yeah, I saw that one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, so AWS, Amazon Web Services, actually used to work there. But um, it's important to um, get certifications like that. Um, it not only just um, validate your learning and your skills, but um, employers like that. It looks good on your resume. Uh, they have the startup certifications, which is the cloud practitioner. They have, when you go a little bit deeper, more advanced, the um, associate levels, and then they have the um, professional levels. So a lot of businesses are looking at that. Some of them, some businesses want you to already have that. If not, you can uh, go ahead and do that. So along with the AWS certification, you also have a lot more cloud certificates like the Google Cloud and Microsoft Cloud, but businesses are using AWS these days. So um, it's a good way to start if you want to get into it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jody. And just to piggyback on that, the question for those who might just be popping in here is, what are some things you can put in place to 
um, to become a cybersecurity specialist. Um, so just to piggyback and reiterate what Jody said there, certifications really do help that. And some of those tips that we said earlier today with networking and finding folks in that industry so you can pick their brains and have better insights to see what steps they take. I'm sure there's not a one way to get into that business. Um, and there are several um, to check out there. Uh, there's actually a great podcast that says Breaking into Cybersecurity. I am featured on it, but you don't, don't look at my interview. But there's some really great other interviews in there that could also shed some light on how they broke into cybersecurity as well. Uh, the next question up here is, what does artificial intelligence do? I'll leave that to Grace or Jody and to answer that one. Okay, so I'm going to, because I talked about that earlier. So, um, so artificial intelligence, it has a lot to do with machine learning and big data. So um, now uh, people and businesses are breaking into that by uh, learning machine learning algorithms. It's a whole deep uh, subject on that, but um, you can review that on Google and you can see what it is. And there's even a certificate on AWS on um, AWS certified machine learner as well. So um, those are some of the things that you can do. You can Google that. Awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jody Ann. The next question we have here from Kalichi Francis is breaking into tech can be overwhelming. How do you narrow down the areas of interest without overwhelming yourself? I think I have an answer on this one. I'll start if you don't mind, ladies, and I'll pass over the mic if you have any other um, comments to that. Uh, breaking into tech is overwhelming. I am very much overwhelmed on it. I went through a gamut of different roles in the company to figure out what suited me best. Um, how do you narrow down those areas of interest without overwhelming yourself? I say start small. I mentioned earlier about networking within your own bandwidth. If you're gonna try to do everything, you're not really doing anything at all. So focus on what you're good at and see if what you can transfer those skills or soft skills to other positions that might be there. Um, and again, those tech industries have so many more roles that again, does not include code and you don't have to be behind the computer every time, but there are a lot of uh, relationship positions from customer success managers, account, uh, account executives, and, and the like. Um, and also trying out that um, activity of dreaming up your uh, dream job description could also help facilitate what that actually looks like for you and how you can siphon out those or filter down those interests and in companies for you as well. Um, ladies, do you have any other comments to that? on how they can narrow down areas of interest without overwhelming themselves. Yeah, um, just, I can comment on that. Just find your space, um, find what you enjoy doing. And sometimes uh, what you enjoy doing gets a little bit tough, but it's just you to know that, okay, this is what I wanna do. This is where I'm gonna um, uh, pursue pursue and also just go for it I say go for it full-fledged head-on and just have no regrets um, you can overcome that fear because again back to the imposter syndrome you can overcome that fear by number one you can mentor or um, you can just build on that knowledge that you have gained um, and you can read you can watch YouTube channels. I mean, there's so many ways you can break into that. And um, you start small and you just grow. You know, you start as junior, you'll grow into a mid-level then a senior level. So um, breaking into tech, it's, 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 it's challenging, but it's rewarding, so. Awesome comments, Jody, and thank you so much for that. Grace, do you have any to add? Yeah, I would like to say, um, it it's very overwhelming. Uh, it can be challenging, but there is so many free resources out there, YouTube, podcasts, and there is a Linux Academy and iCloud Guru. So it will help you. And you can try um, you can try AWS and try it out. And if you like, if you don't like it, you can try cybersecurity, or if you don't like it try the coding classes and you know your heart will tell you like i like it you know just listen to your heart and it will tell you 
Awesome, awesome. Thank you. And I hope we were able to gleam some light on that question. The next question comes from ITEL A56. What does a person need to become a web developer? I don't know if I got some sense on this one. Ladies, do you have any comments on how to become a web developer? In regards to that, um, that has a lot to do with software too. Not really um, familiar with that, but I do know that it has a lot to do with software and software engineering. Um, and uh, this is also a lucrative field. Uh, you can also find information on like the, the job resources site, like on, on, on Indeed, you can find that um, in Google. Or oh, another thing too, I wanna leave you guys with, join tech communities like tech forums tech communities and um, be a part of that linkedin have that too expand your linkedin and um, yeah you you can reach out to other software engineers or um, coders or web developers you can um, you know, reach out and mentor with people on that but um, i'm not familiar with the web developing no worries, Jenny. Uh -huh. um, I was going to also say, I, I personally have a, a lot of connections in the web development field. Um, if this person would like to connect with me on LinkedIn, I'd be happy to connect with you to somebody that might be able to uh, be easier to pick the brains for. Um, but I imagine it's almost the same gamut, almost the same answer for getting into web development. There, I'm sure there's actually quite a few different roles in web development, whether it's front end, um, you know, strictly just doing UI UX stuff. Um, so I'm sure there is a couple of areas that could go down that hole uh, for folks with web development interests. In. But please reach out to us. We'd be happy to see if we can answer that question offline um, for that. So uh, the next question here that we have, uh, it says to Christina, but I'm pretty sure this is for Jody Ann. Could you explain a little bit more of why AWS certifications are and why is it so important? Yeah, um, as I mentioned before, um, the AWS certifications are all in the cloud. So businesses are moving to the cloud and they are moving their business from on-prem to uh, private. Now um, you can look that up on Google and see the, you know, what it does or the, the, the weight that it holds, but um, you're basically working in the cloud and as an AWS associate, um, you get to manage a lot of businesses. So whether it's um, building up new instances or S3 backup storage or cloud formation, um, that's what businesses are no, now doing. So instead of infrastructure, now everybody's saving their, their um, taking their business to the cloud and um, you can find more on that on Google. <laughs> and, you know, obviously we're a little bit biased to the AWS certifications being an AWS company, but there are plenty others out there between Google and Azure. I mean, if you want to count IBM and Oracle as well. So I know AWS isn't the only cloud. Um, I just, we, I believe personally the AWS certifications hold the most weight in the community now. Um, and especially here in this area, it's quite a hot commodity to have them. And uh, to what uh, Jody Ann said, you can take the cloud practitioner one, which I'm working on. Don't don't tell my boss, but I am working on that. But it is a great way to get a little taste of everything and not have to be so deep dive technical. Um, and you can take some of the other, I think they have a couple of free um, accreditations to get an idea if AWS is something that you're interested in. Um, and I'm pretty sure Google and Azure has their own set of accreditations, which is kind of just a, a little uh, high level overview of all their services. Um, that's not necessarily a certification. Yes, they do actually, Christina. Um, the, yeah, and I also have the practitioner one too. I found that to be easier <laughs> than the associate, but yes, they do. Awesome, awesome, thank you. Uh, next question from the Victoria. Uh, what are some of the challenges you face and how did you overcome them? Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with Grace on this one. I feel like she has a very succinct answers for her challenges. Yeah, um, thank you. I have three boys and I had to learn. I have to catch up the um, gaps I had and 
I learned I learned so much from um, online classes, and also I did I studied I watch YouTube videos and I watch so many TED talks and um, I think it will help you. <laughs> it... Awesome. Thank you, Grace. Uh, Jody Ann, do you have uh, some, uh, some comments on this? What are some challenges you face and how did you overcome them? <laughs> so uh, absolutely. Um, one of the challenges that I've faced uh, has been that um, I've always been the only female <laughs> on a team, it's all male dominant. And I felt that um, whatever a male can do, I can do too. This was back from when I started as, you know, in the, the, the army, you know, um, it's equal, equal, right? So whatever the man can do, I can do too. And I used to feel that, um, I had to, to um, like, I, I felt like I was less because I'm a female and they're more experienced than I was, but I had to realize that, um, no, I am worth it. And um, this is what I can do. And this is what I'm, I bring to the table. And, you know, um, it's all about building up that confidence and being able to do the work and being able to deliver. Um, delivering results is one of my key focus on my day-to-day -day basis, how, what I, you know, what I live by and what I do. So um, challenges, you just gotta know that um, you are going to experience challenge in your work life. It's just how you balance your time and the effort that you put in to what you do. Awesome. Thank you, Jody Ann, um, for those comments there. You know, when it comes to challenges and, you know, what you can overcome for them, I ask you this, are you willing? That's it. Are you willing to overcome them? Um, you know, my husband especially likes to be the richest guy in the world if he could, but is he willing to actually put in the 80 hours of work, dedicate the responsibilities to staying and being rich? So to overcome these challenges, are you willing to face them? Um, is first and foremost. Uh, secondly, I would add is surrounding yourself with a community is a huge thing to that. Um, you know, it is said that you can go fast alone, but you can go far with the team um, and they can really help, help you overcome those challenges as well. Having supportive, positive talk in your mind, as well as the confidence to uh, express that self and also willing to know that you might not be okay, but willing to move from that and, and overcome them could be a, a multitude, multitude of activities that you can do um, from meditation to you know in, uh, increasing your skill sets by continuously learning um, and also just facing it to the person that you might have challenges with try to resolve it right there in, uh, in transparency and to keep the um, there's a saying here with imagine versus notice right uh, imagine versus notice is Notice is facts, imagine is emotion. So are you imagining you have challenges or you just notice there's a step that you just missed or didn't take? Um, and can you imagine you overcoming them? Because you can notice if you actually have to take these steps to overcome them, right? Um, so that's always a good uh, methodology behind, you know, am I imagining that I can't over overcome these challenges? Or am I just noticing that I don't have the gumption to wake up early and study long? or, you know, feed myself and exercise so that I'm, you know, um, fit and sound. So I'm not sure if that um, helped answer your questions there, Victoria. Uh, but if it doesn't, please connect with us offline on LinkedIn. We'd be happy to continue those conversations with you. Um, so we're kind of hitting our tail end here. I will have one last question. And as always, uh, we always want to continue the conversation and check out Rhythmic Technologies and see what we're up to. There could be some great content there as well. Um, so last question, ladies, is, is it okay to approach recruiters, both local and international, without calls for application and try to sell yourself? I can say a few comments here, but before I do, Jody Ann or Grace, do you have any comments to that? Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Absolutely. Um, you want it, go for it. I agree that you go for it. Um, you're looking for new opportunities or just 
um, a better opportunity. Uh, reach out to recruiters, network. It's very important that you do because if you don't sell yourself, how are you going to be discovered? And just put your best foot forward. So yes, yes, 100% reach out to recruiters locally and internationally. Do not limit yourself um, on just because you're in Nigeria. You don't think that you can um, work in other countries too. No, it's not. It's all about your skill set and your soft skills and what you can bring to the table and what you can um, do for a company. So yes, absolutely. Reach out. Awesome. Thank you, Jody. And Grace, do you have any comments to the question? Yes, absolutely. Um, I went to interviews like so many times, maybe 50 or 60. So first interview was really bad. Second was bad. 10th interview, it's got better. <laughs> and I finally got hired. I was so happy. And um, I, I want to say that um, practice makes it perfect. So just try, go through interviews and contact recruiters. You can do it. Awesome. Thank you, Grace. Um, so I, being the business development lead, I do come across a lot of job seekers and recruiters alike. Um, if you are going to be reaching out to recruiters uh, that aren't doing calls for application and trying to sell yourself, uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of finesse that you kind of have to come with that, right? Uh, you can't just say, hey, recruiter guy, let me get a job. Here's who I am. Um, so having a great resume, having great uh, reputable um, references could help with that. Um, doing soft touches as well, where you can, you know, follow them, like them, comment and engage on their content as recruiters. So now they see your name subliminally popping up versus just some random person reaching out to get a job because to them, you are essentially a number in that aspect. But if you build that relationship with recruiters, now you're more of top of mind as your name, as a person that they can try to find a good fit for you. Um, also having a well-rounded LinkedIn page is a huge, uh, huge breeding ground for recruiters there. If recruiters aren't already reaching out to you based on your LinkedIn information, might take a second look at your LinkedIn information. And then there's also a little button um, to open up your LinkedIn to recruiters as well. Um, so they can reach out to you. So when you are seeking out recruiters to approach, do the research and find out how their methodologies are in the company. Um, there's I have like 15 recruiters that I know and all of them have different areas that they serve to and different ways that they serve the candidate. Um, so do the research there. I would essentially start in your local um, community and government first before reaching out to third party recruiting firms, um, unless you have kind of that package of LinkedIn, your messaging and uh, you know who you are and your brand to showcase to them. All right, so uh, to that folks, I know we're a little over here, but uh, you know we don't want to stop the questions here. Uh, Victoria has shared all of our LinkedIn information. If you want to know more about Rhythmic Technologies, you can check us out there too. Um, and thank you all for this opportunity. Uh, it was really great and, and we worked really hard to get this to you and I hope you can take some really great takeaways that you can do today, tomorrow and into the future. Um, and would love to talk with you all if you want to reach out. Um, but thank you again uh, for the DSC for inviting us to present to you today. And I hope you all have a beautiful, beautiful weekend as you absorb all this stuff. <laughs> um, yes, thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you, Christina, for uh, following our invitation and, uh, and Grace and Jody Han as well. And also, I just want to extend this Greetings to uh thank you to uh, sorry to Victoria as well for anchoring this program. Uh, Victoria is one of the core team members in DSC. Uh and also thank you everyone for joining in. Uh and I hope you actually learned one or two things. You can actually follow all of the ladies that just talked on LinkedIn. They are quite cool. Uh and uh yeah, quite cool and very, very approachable. Yeah. So thank you, ladies, and thank you all. I've gone to the end of the program. Uh, thank you so much. I hope you all have a great weekend. Thank Bye you. Thank you. Bye. All right. I'll awkwardly stay here until everybody leaves, so don't you worry. <laughs>
But uh, for those, uh, we do have this recorded. We'll be sharing our social links and all the extra uh, links from GitHub and stuff like that. Um, and the slide deck will also be shared as well. So if you weren't here, you didn't get to catch all of it, um, the uh, presentation has been recorded, which I'm gonna go ahead and stop right now. <laughs>